This presentation will be a case report on a missed uncommon lesion on a chest radiograph. These are the abbreviations to be noted that will be used in this presentation. I'd especially like for you to focus on CXR for chest X-ray, CT for computer tomography, and ER for emergency room. On December 20, 2019, a 72-year-old male presented to the ER with a chief complaint of back pain. Other complaints included weakness and 10 kg weight loss in the previous few months, lack of appetite, um, feeling of fullness quickly, meaning after a few bites, the patient felt full, and nausea without vomiting. Stool and urine had been normal, everything else had been normal, except a slightly elevated pulse. Lab results revealed elevated CRP, kidney dysfunction, and slight anemia. So this was the patient's chest x-ray from the day he visited the ER, and it was reported normal, negative, which means normal, uh, by the reading radiologist. Same night, abdominal ultrasound also revealed a one centimeter liver cyst. But one thing I'd like for you to question is whether this chest x-ray is really normal. Okay, so we'll be talking about chest area assessment, assessment now. And um, first of all, you should note the view. You should know whether it's posterior, anterior, anterior, posterior, or a lateral view. After that, you need to assess the rotation. And to do that, you check the distance between the medial clavicular end to the spinous process in the middle. And the distance should be equidistant from both. So the different ways to um, actually assess the chest X-ray itself the different mnemonics and methods, but I chose the ABCDEF um, mnemonic to follow. And for that, A stands for airway. And in this, you can assess the trachea, for instance, the deviation or whether it's midline, the carina, as the carina should be at the level of T4 to T6, and endotracheal tube placement, which should be three to five centimeters above the carina. B stands for bones, and in this you can assess fractures and pathologies in the clavicle, ribs, scapula, um, or vertebrae. C stands for circulation, in this you can assess the shape and size of the heart and any lesions of the grave vessels or mediastinum. D stands for diaphragm, and in this you assess the position of the diaphragm as it could be elevated or depressed, or it could be normal. You can also assess the outline and normal neighboring structures. E stands for edges, and for this, you can assess long borders and angles, such as the costophrenic angle, as there could be fluid there. F stands for field, in which you can assess the long parenchyme, uh, parenchyme and hyla for, uh, uh, for fluid density, and you can assess the fissures. So there are certain areas on the chest x-ray which tend to, uh, to go overlooked by reporting radiologists. And these areas are called hidden areas or blind spots. They include the lung apex, the hyla, the paramediastinum, the retrocardiac region below the diaphragm, soft tissues, and lines and devices. Lines and devices could include pacemakers and central venous catheters, for example. And it's important to check and reassess these areas uh, before a final report is given by the radiologist, as some lesions tend to be hidden in these areas. So going back to our patient, so this is actually his chest x-ray from 10 years ago, May 31st, 2010, and it is normal. This is actually his normal chest x-ray. And I'm not gonna go through and assess the ABCDF criteria, but I want you to know two more important things, the most important things here. The outline of the vertebra column is clearly visible. And behind the heart, you can see only vasculature. And this is important because going to the next image, this is the image from the day he went to the ER. And those two same things I mentioned, the outline of the vertebra and retrocardiac region, they're not the same here. Here, the outline is obscured. You can't delineate it. And there's an opacity here behind the heart, a triangular, quite triangular shaped opacity. You can also see it here. 
So besides those two findings, other things you should note are the is the presence of atherosclerosis in the aortic knob, just some, uh, epipericardial fats at next to the apex of the heart, and the left hilar, which seems more pronounced. So the reporting radiologist missed all these findings and concluded the chest x-ray was negative. So due to the symptoms, the patient was suspected of having pleuritis and was sent home with amoxicillin. However, three months later, due to persistent symptoms, a CT was done and it revealed a big soft tissue mass later diagnosed as an oesophageal cancer. Besides, the big, besides this finding, it also revealed pulmonary effusion and actylactasis of the left lower lung lobe. Here, this darkened density is pleural effusion. Then here, in this structure is here, you can see a line, if I zoom in, you can see a demarcating line here. And, um, this line demarcates the left lower lung lobe actylactasis from the soft tissue mass itself. Then over here, we can see the mass here uh, in relation to neighboring structures such as the aorta, the esophagus here, which has contrast, and the trachea, also the heart too. And over here, you can see the relation of the mass itself again to the aorta and the heart. So these are axial CT slices, and here you can see the trachea, the esophagus, the aorta, and you can see the darkened density here as well, which is once again pleural effusion. We're at the, here we're at the level of the carina, you can see the uh, left, right and left main stem bronchi branching off and the esophagus. You can see the pleural effusion again, and you can see, see a demarcating line here, where which which demarcates the pleural effusion from the left lung lobe actylactasis here. Aorta is here, esophagus, like I said again. And then also over here, we, have, we can see the right and left main bronchi have branched out completely. And uh, once again, same structures, pleural effusion, actylactasis. But uh, what's important to note is in another, in the next presentation, I'll show you how there's a secondary branch missing here and how that relates to our case. So over here you can see the mass in its diameters. Oops, oops, sorry. You can see the mass in its diameters and over here you can see the esophagus, the aorta, the left atrium. And this is in venous phase, this is an arterial phase. You can note how uh, the re regional spread of the mass in relation to the structures, neighboring structures, aorta, aorta, esophagus, left atrium once again. So here we have, here we have sagittal images, sorry, no, coronal images, sorry. Um, here we have coronal images and you can see how here on the right, we can see the secondary bronchi, clearly evident and visualized, but here on the left, there's a branch missing. And that's due to the impression of the mass on the branch causing an obstruction leading to the actylactasis. Uh, same here, you can see it. Over here, you can see the mass in relation to the aorta, descending aorta. And you can see this triangular shaped structure here. This is the actylactic left lung lobe. And once again, same as before, pleural diffusion, atelactatic left lung globe and soft tissue mass. That is the esophageal cancer. So when we're comparing the CT to the chest X-ray, uh, two things I'd like for you to note is the opacity behind the heart. Uh, you realize that it's not just the mass, but it is the actylactasis itself. And in fact, that triangular shape you see at a point here is due to the actylactasis but together the opacity is the mass and the actylactasis. Another thing I'd like for you to note is the left hilum, which seems more pronounced. That is due to the growth of the tumor past the wall of the left pulmonary artery extension into its extension into the mediastinum, especially in the left hilar region, making it appear more pronounced. 
So esophageal cancer is the ninth most common cancer worldwide and 95% of the time it appears as squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma. Here you can see their risk factors. Other subtypes include lymphomas, melanomas, carcinoid tumors, and sarcomas. The overall five-year survival rate is 15 to 20%. For symptoms, it's typically asymptomatic in early stages and only appears symptomatic in advanced stages. It presents with dysphagia, weight loss, odinophagia, dyspepsia, and chest pain. Diagnosis follows suggestive symptoms, in which indicate an upper endoscopy, and a biopsy is done to confirm the diagnosis. Staging needs to be done after diagnosis. It is multimodality, and it follows the TNM staging criteria designed by the American Joint Committee on Cancer, uh, where T stands for tumor depth of invasion, N stands for regional lymph node involvement, and M stands for distant metastasis. It is also important to assess the grade of the tumor um, as this, and we all know this is about the level of differentiation. So modalities used for staging cancer. First of all, the, important, the importance of staging um, esophageal cancer is because prior to surgery, you need to assess whether surgery is useful for the case, for the patient's case, specific case. And it's also needed to assess therapeutic response after neoadjuvant therapy. So we can, so firstly, Endoscopic ultrasound is used, and this is best used for tumor invasion depth and lymph node involvement. Then PET CT is done, uh, and this for this um, it is important for the assessment of distant metastasis and local regional assessment. Here you can see the different stages and the location and localization of the tumor in those stages and the involvement of the lymph nodes local regional spread, and distant metastasis. Sadly, the patient passed away from the advanced cancer. And though the reporting radiologist did, did miss the chest x-ray findings on December 20th, 2019, at that point, the cancer was already too advanced. Curative therapy would not have been possible. Regardless, care should be taken by reporting radiologists to follow the chest x-ray image assessment guidelines properly as accurate assessment equates accurate diagnosis and a better idea of a patient's prognosis. Thank you.